So the first time I went to New York City, I was in my 20s, and I went to the Metropolitan Museum, and I went to the Egyptian wing first, and I got stuck there. I ended up spending the whole rest of the day in the Egyptian wing. I was completely fascinated by all of the old ancient artifacts that they had in these, these glass cases. Now, I'd seen these photos or read in textbooks about them, but to stand in front of them and, and have nothing between me and them but some glass was fascinating to me. So all these years later, imagine how fascinated I am now to be able to stand on or next to an ancient earthwork that was built before most of those Egyptian artifacts were made, before the pyramids were built in Egypt, before Stonehenge. This ancient earthwork is about an hour's drive from here. It was built between five and 6,000 years ago from good old Louisiana dirt, basket by basket by basket. And it is just standing in the middle of farmland. When I took this photograph, there was a cotton field all the way around it. There are over 700 of these mound sites in Louisiana with a really high concentration here in northeastern Louisiana. We have some of the oldest earthworks any place in North America. So I got interested in trying to find these earthworks. Where were they? So I met with archaeologists, and they sort of taken me to these sites. Um, most of them are on private property. There aren't any laws to protect them. They are, they're not tourist destinations. They are not celebrated. Um, so we had to go out and find them. And they had to introduce me to these landowners to try to get permission to actually take these photographs. And I have found these all over the place. They are along just dusty dirt roads, um, sandwiched between cornfields with a big ancient mound as a sort of traffic circle. Um, or they are deep in the woods, secluded, sort of like this ancient sacred cathedral in the middle of nowhere. Some of them are in the middle of town. This is in Tallulah, Louisiana, and it actually has a house built on top of it. Um, and this house has a cellar, which is rare in Louisiana, and this cellar goes all the way down inside this earthwork. They have cemeteries built on top of them. They have tool sheds built on top of them. What better place to store your farm equipment than on top of an ancient earthwork? Um, some of them, granted, are not very, very big, um, and they can be completely bare. Some of them are quite tall and quite steep and covered in vines and debris and tree limbs and poison ivy and um, snakes. Um, so they're literally all over the place. There is one site that is open to the public, and that's Poverty Point, which is about an hour's drive from here. And when it was active, it was the largest city in North America. It was New York City. It was the place to be. I knew people who go out there, people in this room that I've talked to tonight, who said, this place is boring. There's nothing there um, but some piles of dirt. And um, I think if you go there and you just drive around and drive back home, then you're probably just not going to see anything but piles of dirt. This is a topographic map of what the site looks like today. You can see the mounds. You can see the earth ridges. You can see the open plaza in the center. Um, so this was a fairly big city. And if you go to the site and you go in the museum and you, know, you get out of your car and walk around a little bit, watch there's a little short film, look at the artifacts in the glass cases, and really get out and walk on foot. You'll start to feel the size of this place, and you'll start to feel the people who built it. And they were just hunter-gatherers and fishers. They had a ton of work to do just to put food on the table, just to have the basic necessities. And um, they had to build this huge city out of dirt. They also had to truck in, without trucks, um, raw materials. Poverty Point doesn't have really anything in the way of rock, which was absolutely necessary. So they set up these major trading networks all the way as far as Georgia and the Great Lakes. And this was before Google, where you could like find where to go, or eBay just to order it and have it sent to you. Um, and there are over 70 metric tons of rock at Poverty Point that's been brought in from someplace else. They also have fake rocks. And they made those out of clay. And this is a, um, what they call a Poverty Point object, a PPO. 
and they would heat these and use them for cooking. And this is an actual artifact, 3,500-year-old artifact from Poverty Point. With all of the work they had to do, they also found time to create art. Um, these little owls are made out of stone and about the size of my thumbnail. They would make faces and torsos out of fired clay. And they would make just decorative objects that had no purpose other than being decorative or symbolic. So with all the work they had to do, they also knew the importance of creating art and they found time to do that. Standing on top of one of these mounds can be absolutely magical. I can stand on top of here and close my eyes and imagine all that clutter is gone and see these people down below just living their lives, creating all this stuff and dropping it on the ground and leaving it. And I've reached down at some of these sites and picked up what looks like just nondescript gravel. But it's not. It's fire-cracked rock. It's rock that would have been heated and used to cook food and left on the ground. And I've picked it up and held it, knowing that the last person to touch it probably did so 6,000 years ago. And I feel so connected to these people and can start to imagine this timeline that stretches from a 6,000-year-old mound to poverty point to um, them learning about agriculture and irrigation and all the things that Chris mentioned, all the way up to where we're sitting here today. And I think my spot on that timeline is like minuscule. And I feel insignificant and small. You know, you sit on this giant earthwork and you think about our culture today and we think we're so smart. But what if all those things that Chris mentioned are even still here today? Even the glass Coke bottle is plastic now. Um, so I wonder, what are we leaving behind? What are people going to find on the ground from us? Where are they going to reach down and pick up and hold in their hand and say, ah, that's who these people were? And what are they going to think about the way we're treating their planet? I hope that we can find a way to keep these ancient mounds safe so that future generations, future generations can stand on them and feel their connection to us and feel their connection to the people who built these places. And I hope that, after spending a few minutes with these mounds, that you'll appreciate them a little bit more. And the next time you see some big pile of dirt in the middle of nowhere, or pick up a rock off the ground, to remember that, like most things in life, not everything is as it first seems. Sometimes you have to get out of the car and walk around a little bit to be able to see below the surface. Thank you.